actually my first 100 euros I made in the third day of the streaming. And what's the biggest deal you have gotten? Is it about 50? Um, sometimes, yeah. Wow. For the Samsung, it was two days. Uh, I'm not very much, I, I was never focused like specifically on the income. For me, it was more about the passion, about what's driving me. What's the biggest donation you have had on Twitch? Okay, it was not one time, it was two days, but same person. And then two days together, it was 10,000. Wow, that's cool. But I think that money has to be somewhere in the bottom of the list of your goals. For me, it's like, you know, more of like creating things, like just being happy with what you do and uh, just be passionate about that. If I don't feel one day that I don't want to play that game, I just can turn off the stream and do something else, you know? Story, how you got Logitech to be your sponsor? Would you like us to send you like a gaming mouse? And they did send me, not mouse, they literally did send me a huge box of like keyboards, mouse, headsets. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, today I have a special guest. Her name is Dana. She is a world famous Twitch streamer with millions of followers. And she's one of the top 350 streamers on the planet Earth. Right now, let's rock. This is gonna be an amazing conversation. So let's get it. Today I'm with Dana. Uh, she's actually one of the top 350 streamers on the planet. We have almost seven, eight billion people and there is an industry which is 385 billion. Yeah, that's billion gaming industry and she's the top streamer from Latvia who's amazing. And today we're gonna talk a lot about gaming, a lot about, about you, how you got to the success you have. And first thing we're gonna cover is how much money do you make per month? Oh my God, you're starting like this instantly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was unexpected. Um, well, uh, as I mentioned before, we were, we were a little bit talking. Um, this is not like a traditional job, so you don't get like a certain amount of the income every single month uh, because it very much depends on the month, on the world situation, what's happening around the gaming industry. Um, so, and is it very much depends as well on streamer then? Because um, like it very much depends on yourself how much you can make. Um, it's not like every single month I make like one certain amount of the money. It's always like very, very diverse. It can be from like 20K to like 100K approximately in that gap. So that's per month? Yes. Cool. And how does that money come from? What are the sources? Because you mentioned there are sponsorships. Uh, you are also uh, sponsored by Logitech, which I think is amazing. There are views from organic followers, which you have millions of them. And there are probably Twitch ads, all sorts of mambo jumbo. Where does the money come from? Can you give me like a breakdown? 20% this, 50% this. Can you okay. give me a breakdown? Um, so I'm going to start with mentioning where from and then I'm mm -hmm. going to think about where is the percentage coming from. Uh, so yeah, basically sponsors it would be the highest uh, income. Uh, then obviously your Twitch streams uh, are the subscribers, then also like uh, bits, um, donations, ad revenue from the Twitch as well. Um, then obviously there's also affiliate links, but those are like the, the smallest part of the income. And um, and then, then what was the last one? And then yeah, from the YouTube as well. YouTube, it's... Um, um, integrations plus ads as well. Uh, so probably um, the percentage wise, it's so hard to tell. Again, it's very much depends on every single month. Because it's like this. Yeah, it always goes like this. Because sometimes you can get one month zero sponsor deals and then next month you might have like five to six sponsor deals and then it just like it's dramatic difference. Uh, but definitely the highest income is always from the sponsors. 50%? Higher. Higher? Yeah. 80? like 60 I would say approximately again it very much depends on the month it's never gonna be like um I don't know 50 every single month maybe there might be non-sponsored deals and then most of the income is gonna be from the twitch it's like very much depends on the month and what's the story how you got Logitech to be your sponsor did they reach oh, out to you, you yeah how that was an amazing story actually and I'm still I'm so thankful to them because they're they are just amazing because throughout like I've been working with them already four years and throughout four years we have built incredible relationships they're like amazing people working there and uh, when i just started my streams um i was relatively new to everything i had no idea how everything works because i think that you really learn throughout the process of like uh, when you stream when you have like you're talking with new people and understanding what's going on in this industry in general 
um, they did reach out to me because my camera positioning on stream was like from the side where you could see my mouse. So they did uh, message me with like, they sent me an email being like, would you like us to send you like a gaming mouse? So like you play with it, like and showcase on stream. And uh, back then I think I had like approximately like 300 view views uh, per my streams. And I was like, for sure. And they did send me not mouse. They literally did send me a huge box of like keyboards, mouse headsets, uh, mouse pods, and everything was three times like three keyboards, three mouses, four headsets. And I was like, whoa, this was like incredible because I was first uh, ever gift from like a company which is related to gaming. Uh, and yeah, that was the, pretty much the start where we started like working. And I was like, wow, thank you very much for this like gesture. And then we just started to communicate, obviously. And from there, the relationship started to um, develop. And uh, yeah, and since since then we started to work and uh, I'm very happy to be with them because back then when I started, there was like first uh, campaign I did with them. It was related to like webcams. Uh, you know how those webcams on, uh, I don't know, for the Zoom calls or something. So they were releasing new webcam and they just choose four creators among like millions to like be part of this um, campaign. And one of the creators was me. And I had never had any experience of like doing any sort of filming uh, with like people I don't know or something. And I remember they did send like a crew of uh, three or four people to come over my place because they wanted to film my setup and like me and like make a little interview. And if I would watch that, like that campaign back like today, I would be like so shy. How, the, how did they even decide to work with me? Because I was like, I was so insecure. I did not know how to talk and how to behave in front of the camera because I was so new to everything. Uh, but yeah, I really do think that big part of uh, like how I have developed myself in this industry is definitely also thanks to them because they did believe in me back then when I was like so green, let's say. And I did not know how to like, how to behave properly in front of the camera, but they still did believe in me. And uh, it's like, I, I, I just love them very much. That's a cool story. But how, like for me, the question is, um, they send you stuff, right? Yeah. With the stuff, you can buy like clothes, food, etc. But next sponsored deals, how are they structured typically? Do they pay you one time? Do they pay you monthly? Do, do, do they need you to show the product? Like what are the deal structures? And Is can it you give me one example? specifically about Logitech or in general? Yeah, you could give an example for Logitech. Logitech, Logitech. Okay, so... Uh, how my work is with Logitech is that we do have like contracts, right? Mm -hmm. And I, it, it's like with every single sponsor like this, uh, they either like want three months sponsorship, six months sponsorship, sponsorship, yearly sponsor, sp sponsorship. Uh, so uh, with Logitech specifically, I have like yearly. And, and what do you need to do? And what do they give you? So normally like every single um, sponsor has like their own like vision what they would like to do for instance they want you to post like three stories per month no that's too much one story per month on instagram like mentioning like like you know in your in their, in their headsets or you drinking their product or something and i don't know posts uh, i don't know tiktok videos or integrations into youtube as well so it's like it's very much depends on sponsor and on the deal but yeah mostly it's like a very standard it's like um uh, integration into your streams obviously so you use their products uh, then number two would be Instagram if you have like developed your Instagram and you have like followers there um, they want for instance to for you to post like one post per month one story per month mm -hmm. and then same with TikTok same with um, Twitter for instance so and what do they give you how much money are we talking about per deal or per month or per so normally like if it's if it's like a long-term partnership that there is like one certain fee and mm -hmm. then that's it like they pay you that certain fee uh, but sometimes there is like let's say um, I don't know, like monthly uh, sponsorship, for instance, with a software's um, VPNs. Uh, they want, again, it very much depends what they want. Mentions on stream, shout outs, uh, sorry, shout outs on stream, uh, stories on Instagram. So it very much depends. And it's just like a, you agree on a fee, which they are going to pay to you. And then you just uh, bring out the deliverables. Got it. And what's the biggest deal you have gotten? Money-wise. Money-wise. Uh... I think it was recently, actually. It was with Samsung. Mm. How much money are we talking about? <laughs> actually, I don't think I would. I would say that, but I'm not sure if I'm even allowed to say those things uh, because of the contracts. Because sometimes you might sign contract, and there is like mentioned that you're not allowed to. You uh, know. Okay, I'm gonna ask you like a ballpark. Is it above 10k per sponsorship? Yes, yeah, for, sure, for sure. It's above. Yeah, for sure. Is it above 50? Um, sometimes, yeah. Wow. And that's for a month or that's for a year or quarter? 
the above 50. It depends. Like for the Samsung, it was two days. Okay. Yeah. But the biggest one for the 50. It was Samsung. Mm. For Crazy. two days. Two days. Crazy. Two days of, yeah, it was pretty. But it was also super fun, you know? For me, now it's like, uh, I'm not very much, I, I was never focused like specifically on the income. For me, it was more about the passion, about what's driving me, mm -hmm. how I'm growing as my, as an individual, as a person. That was the main drive and main focus for me because uh, I feel like if you're going to put money on the first place, uh, especially in this industry, I might be wrong for someone might be working this way that like if you focus only on money, maybe you're going to also succeed. But I think that money has to be somewhere in the bottom of the list of your goals. For me, it's like, you know, more of like creating things, like just being happy with what you do and uh, just be passionate about that. I remember you were talking with Yanis Skutlis in the show in Latvia. You said you, it only took you half a month, half a year to start making some income, which yes. was in 2018 you started. Yeah. And in mm -hmm. half a year, you started making some income. Can you describe what was the feeling when you first made your 100 euros and how much money were you making after half or after half a year? Okay, so um, actually my first 100 euros I made in the third day of the streaming. Uh, third day? Enough. Yeah. That's fast. Yeah, it was That's just fast. like... It took me like half a year to YouTube. No, <laughs> it took me two years in YouTube to make 100 euros. <laughs> No, it's like a different story, you know, because like when you're alive, people might come to your stream and there's actually one person I'm actually still super thankful to him because who knows, maybe if he wouldn't show me uh, this, um, like, you know, if he wouldn't show me that it's possible, who knows, maybe I would stop back then because it's very mentally hard to do uh, live streams, especially when you're female, because that's a male dominant industry. Um, so there was a person, yeah, who just came into my stream on the third day and he just donated me like uh, $50 first day, second day, $50. And I was like, whoa, this is like, it's actually like happening. And I was very surprised because uh, I never knew that this sort of things are happening in the world, you know? Um, so it was amazing. And that was like, he, not that he motivated me, he just showed me that that's actually possible, that you can make something out of it. Um, and after the half year, I actually don't even remember after half a year of streaming how I was making, how much I was making, but it was already something that I was, that I was able to like sit at home, pay my bills, like, you know, for rent, for like food, uh, which here is luckily enough is not super high compared to, let's say, um, Los Angeles, right? If you would live there, rent alone costs there like $5,000 plus food is very expensive there. So you need to survive there in a comfort, like uh, environment, like 10 K per month. But in here, like you, you can make like 700 euros back then in 2018. Um, and then you can like live uh, in a good apartment, more or less good apartment, obviously not in the most fanciest one and uh, buy yourself a food and yeah, just live out of those, of, of that money. I have a, still, a cool, cool story. So you are Dana and there's another girl. She, her name is Anna. She is also in 2018. She's also going to start streaming the same time you're starting streaming. But she has better camera, better mouse, better keyboard, better computer, much faster computer, better camera. And the setup is nicer. And she starts and you start, but she fails and she doesn't get successful with streaming and she doesn't make income with streaming. Mm -hmm. Why you succeed? Uh, back then, I think uh, it happened because, first of all, I started to play the game, which was... Uh, revolution if i wouldn't i wouldn't like i wouldn't be like probably mistaken if i would say like this because that was a br genre which was out for one or two years and it was just blowing up and people were just getting into it and uh, i'm a person who uh like practically wise learn super fast and um since i played games from the childhood um i kind of i'm catching up things very fast and uh, i was just able to learn the game um, and play it a little bit above the average, I guess. And that way people start to kind of notice me and recognize me that like, whoa, look at what she's doing in the video game. Because back then in 2018, Twitch was purely about the gaming. Because nowadays, like if you would ask me today and like back in 2018, that's two different platforms. So back then it was purely about the gaming and I was, uh, I guess, lucky enough to just learn it a little bit higher than an average player. And that way just, yeah, I att attract the attention. Because so of my you gameplay. need to be great at the game. Back in then, in 2018, nowadays, it's uh, not it's not a main factor anymore. Obviously, it's still a factor. Like if you're insane at the game and if you're able to show something 
incredible and your performance is just like top notch then yes uh but um but also obviously you, you have to bring some kind of uniqueness into your content and uh back then as well in 2018 uh we did create a custom songs on my channel which would like be triggered during uh the game for instance when i win and then people would be able to activate the song it's like a one minute uh, long song but it's super hyped it's like very fun and people were loving it and uh, that was also i think one of the factors because like till today people still talk about that music being like wow that's just the best song i ever had they download it put it on as the ringtones and so on um so again you have to add also a little bit of uniqueness and something you have to do something a little bit different from what everyone else does because purely just on gaming today i don't think you can like do anything out of it and again i might be wrong because everyone has their own um like success story and they have they have to figure out their path on their own so this leads me to the next thing which is what would you right now do step by step if you have no name no followers nothing you have your setup everything but nothing how would you start again if your goal would be to start making let's say 10k a month as soon as possible with twitch and with this mumbo jumbo stuff as soon as possible 10k 10k is actually a lot for the twitch um oh that's actually a super hard question and uh i can just answer approximately but again i would not know if that would actually work out uh, but I'm pretty sure that I would still do what I do. I would play games on a, on a level which I play. Which games would you play? Would you play the same game? And I'd you were referencing PUBG, as mm -hmm. I'm correct. And you were referencing also that this game had this new mod, which is 100 people in an island, and then the one who survives wins, right? Yes. Okay, what game would you play now? Um, I think that it would be still be our genre, because that's one of the main genres which people do like to watch, the survival games. BR a Battleground. Uh, Battle Royale? Yeah, Battle Royale. Okay. I'm not so good. <laughs> it's fun. I like, I, I follow games, but not so maybe good. Yeah, I think it would be still Battle Royale. Um, potentially even that would be still PUBG because I still believe if you show an incredible gameplay in even an old game like PUBG because it's already been out there for uh, six years, which is considered kind of as old game, uh, you can still make name out of it. Thank you for your attention and I hope you get a lot of value from this content. What you could do to help me is to share this video with one of your friends or post it on Instagram or a social platform. That would help a lot for this channel. Stay sharp and let's get back to the episode. Why would you go to PUBG if you know, if you go to Twitch browser? You no, 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 that was just like an example. I oh, okay. would probably still play PUBG or also, but I think that my mind kind of, for instance, now thought that I would probably do Fortnite because Fortnite is very, till today, it's like one of the most watched VR games out there and the content which they're bringing is just incredible and people still love to watch it and uh, they still enjoy to watch it. So probably Fortnite, probably Apex Legends, maybe still PUBG, maybe I would play World of Warcraft, who knows, but... Uh, I don't know. I would definitely though stick to like a gaming uh, um, like environment, uh, potentially with a mix of some kind of other integration like I do nowadays. I'm like trying to do like chiral streams, cooking streams sometimes, very rarely, but I do. Uh, so yeah, there's like a lot of diversity. And how would you go about it? So you make a Twitch account, you start playing, what do you do? Um, so majority of people probably think that you just press live button, you stream, I don't know, for 12 hours a day or something, and then you finish the stream and then you relax. Actually, the main job happens off stream because like you have to, you definitely have to work on your other platforms in order to grow your Twitch, at least in my opinion. Like, I don't think that you can grow Twitch alone without a help of other platforms, like such as YouTube, TikTok even, uh, Instagram, for instance, because let's say if you have a certain followage on Instagram, you can just send the, your audience being like yo I'm actually live streaming come and check out my streams and then people can go and check you out because it's it's a live unique content right it happens right now right here it's nothing pre-recorded it's nothing that you can adjust it happens specifically in the second and uh, people just like to watch you and interact with you and ask you questions and so on so um, definitely you have to work for your other platforms like a lot you have to generate and make different kind of content different kind of ideas and that's like non-stop chase because you always have to if you did one video you sit down and be like okay i'm done you're not done you have to consistently like you did one video you already have to work on another video and it's just like consistent chase of this trends and like creating and uh, yeah doing which it. platforms would you work on uh which platforms i recommend yeah as you start again from zero you're uh, not that would be youtube and tiktok 
YouTube, TikTok, not yeah. Instagram. Uh, no, because as you know, the TikTok nowadays is like one of the most uh, popular apps out there, right? And there has been a couple of examples right now on Twitch that some people have generated an insane amount of the views on TikTok. Uh, and they just did send all the TikTok audience to Twitch, which is uh, pretty successful. Um, and YouTube is, um, yeah, YouTube is, is just is just like a place which you always would like to want to have a lot of uh, attention because YouTube, I think YouTube is still stronger than TikTok anyways, but those two platforms definitely would be the main ones to develop and work on. So first step, pick a game. Second step, start streaming. Third step, after you finish streaming, distribute, make content, publish it on YouTube, TikTok, Maybe smaller yeah. platforms. What's next? What's next? I get no views. What's next? You have to keep doing it. It's okay. not going to be like one day you're going to like do one, two clips and then next day you're going to wake up famous. No, it's not going to be like that. You have to hard work, hard work, hard work because it's it might take you a couple of years. It might take you, I don't know, five years to just get somewhere because people still do not give up. I, I know some people who have been streaming. When I started to stream, I've seen them streaming a certain game. Um, so it's been six years because I started to before I started to, uh, to before I started my own streams. Obviously, I was um, I was sitting in the Twitch as a viewer as well. I was trying to understand the environment, what's happening, like how it works, uh, what's going on in the live streams, like checking bots and so on. So it's like a lot of uh, kind of inner study on for yourself to understand because I didn't have anyone to go and ask those questions. So I needed to do it on my own. Uh, so yes, what I was do what I was doing, I was just like first of all studying the Twitch. And uh, yeah, and then... Uh, Is there something else you could do to grow your Twitch channel if you started from zero? Um, I guess I, I guess I maybe mentioned like main things. Um, again, as just developing your other platforms. Um, I think other things doesn't come into my head because I'm just also referring to other successful Twitch streamers right now. There has been one of the most successful Twitch streamer um, he has been actually, he did uh, made a world record of a top uh, of the most subscribers um, recently and uh, he as far as I understood he had his uh, comedy show before mm -hmm. and because of this comedy show he, he he literally had like five six million followers from from this show and then he started to live stream and these people who knew him from the comedy show they all went to watch him live stream and play video games that's interesting that's very interesting. Okay. <laughs> uh, a thing that came up to me, and I want to ask you, and I, I think you will also say the same way I, I'm going to say it, but I just wanted to get your opinion. And uh, the thing was, I saw you on, uh, on the Twitch, and I noticed two things. First thing, I noticed you're an attractive lady. That's number one. Thank you. That's, <laughs> I think it helped you a lot to get attention because that, I think Twitch, mostly guys watch it, right? Mostly. And second thing I found out, you play awesome. You play good. I saw some videos. You're doing headshots, like people riding, you riding, boom. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I was like, because I know playing. I have played. I haven't played PUBG, but I have played like Counter Strike, all these shooters, Battlefield, all of those games. But I was like, man, that's not so easy. I know it's not easy. Yeah, people normally say that I make it look very easy. And yeah, yeah but it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not. Do you agree that you have a competitive advantage on that? Uh, specifically on the looks. Yes. Uh, I think it's like a combination again of two because um, as I mentioned before Twitch in general and gaming in industry in general is very male dominant industry mm -hmm. and if you as a female come there and you show an incredible skill which um, some males can't even beat then you definitely are going to get some attention uh, I don't know if like looks matter a lot because might be might be not because there's a lot of beautiful girls on Twitch um, in gaming or doing other things like painting, dancing and all that. Um, and I'm not sure uh, that that would be a main factor of getting like the attention, mm. you know? So it's like, it's hard to answer because uh, at the end of the day, I think that um, it's way more interesting of showing your, let's say talents, even though I think the talent does not exist. It's a hard work. Um, then like, you know, just sitting there because like I'm pretty and watch <laughs> me, you know, it's okay. like, I don't think it works that way. Last thing on this uh, steps, how much would you stream if you started out? How many days? How many hours? Uh, when I started, or if, if you would start now from zero? Um, well, first of all, I think I, I would do the same what I did. Because when I started, I would stream three to four hours per day because I was trying to understand again how it works. What am I supposed to do? Because um, also when I started to stream, I was streaming in English and okay. my English level was below the average it mm. was quite super basic and mm. i i actually improved it through, throughout the streaming like a lot dramatically i would even say um so 
three to four and then just within the, within the time i was like doing it like five six which would be already a lot because it's, it's relatively hard to be five to six hours non-stop on a focus you know because it, it drains your energy a lot when you are supposed to be watching and being all the time very aware of like what happens in game at the same time entertaining your uh, audience and so on uh so yeah but it definitely depends on your own wish but unfortunately uh i think that in order to succeed you have to be like consistent and present there like you have to be live and you have to uh remind about yourself to your audience that like hey i still exist i'm still here so it's it's basically it's definitely like better to be um always consistent with your schedule um like let's say if you have one day off you announce it like my days off are wednesdays and then people are gonna know that they should not come to wednesday to twitch because they're not gonna find you there right mm. uh but again it's like it's different for everyone for sure okay cool cool okay Let's jump a little bit topic. Uh, I found you uh, by your YouTube channel and there was a video. See, uh, I just wanted to add like you found me because of my YouTube channel. This is how it works. If I wouldn't have a YouTube channel, you probably wouldn't figure out that Dana from Latvia who live streams on Twitch, this exists. So exactly. And I saw the video you showcasing your house, which you built yourself. And uh, I just want to let you let, ask you, what is the story behind that? What how how did you achieve it how do you do it how much it costs what how much because you build it yourself <laughs> yes and then actually met in sauna one of the people who was kind of uh, showing you also some apartments because he was telling me you were thinking maybe to buy an apartment maybe a house or rent a house or buy a house or build a house and then you came up to build a house mm -hmm. what's well, kind of how did that happen um well obviously when you generate certain income you don't want money to be just there in the bank like, you know because money loses its value uh and i didn't have place to live like my own place to live and i knew that um i would like to get something for my own and as you mentioned i was like thinking like uh apartment or house and so on so uh, i came up with the idea that yeah i just uh because i was like watching you know some different kind of options in the market and understood that like what i personally want for myself is not going to be available out there in the market unfortunately because in the beautiful and nice houses people do live they don't sell them <laughs> uh and uh, yeah i just decided that i would like to get my dream and we're going to show it here somewhere it's going to be like b rolling right now oh cool okay yeah. and how much did it cost you to build it um again i don't really approximately would. approximately above a million or below a million below a million yeah below a million yeah below 50 below 500 uh above above 100 okay yeah. That's a ballpark from 500 to a million. <laughs> you don't like the daily numbers <laughs> because I bought my uh, apartment from two, two, 200 to 250, but I bought an apartment. 200 to 250. Yeah. In which place? In which? Uh, I live in uh, uh, center. Okay. Bosnia is a street. Mm -hmm. It's a nice location. Yeah, yeah location is amazing. I mean, if you bought it like, I don't know, five years ago, then. No, it's... I bought it yes. yesterday. <laughs> no, 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 last year. <laughs> oh, last year. I mean, it's a, it's, I think it's a great investment. Did you sure. pay it off all in full? Yeah, of course. Cool. I bought it with the bank. Mm -hmm. Didn't buy it like that. Okay, but I mean, uh, especially in the center, those things always go up in the value. So you're Maybe. gonna just win on that one. Maybe. I'm pretty sure you're gonna just <laughs> Maybe. win. Maybe. Uh, how long did it take to build? Mm, it was actually very fast compared to like how I see other people do um, execute their uh, building process. I think it was in general like one year and eight months, something like that. So uh, one year and eight months. Approximate. I might be lying to be honest. Um, yeah, but something like that. It was relatively fast. Did because, you buy the land also? Uh, yes. Where is it? Like, is it like oh. which rayons? No, right? no, no. I'm not mentioning okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because I couldn't understand. Okay, because it doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just for the safety reasons, I never <laughs> tell those things. Good thing to do. But I love your house. It looks very nice. Thank you. I love the details. Like I was like, oh, that's nice. The kitchen <laughs> and everything. Cool. Let's move forward. Now, how is it? That you don't get bored doing it the same game again and, and again, again and, and again. again um well uh, the good like not that i'm like maybe like of course like 90 percent of the time i still do one game right but 10 percent of the time i do different kind of games and when i do those different kind of games for like hour or two i just understand like why i love that one game so much because uh none other game gives me that those emotions and those feelings when you win it and uh i mean i don't know i don't know how people can could complain of uh of uh, playing a video game as your like you know main source of uh, living so i don't know i just i just love it and i really appreciate it because um 
uh, as I mentioned to you as well before the podcast that I come from nowhere and just uh, if someone would tell me like five six years ago that you would be like uh, uh, making living out of just playing a video game I would think you're crazy like it's impossible you know but it's uh, it is it became possible and I'm very happy and I'm still very thankful for this opportunity which has uh, appeared in my life uh, that's why I mean I can't complain I really can't complain because it is like if I don't feel one day that I don't want to play that game I just can turn off the stream and do something else you know but uh, it still it still it still gives me like a very amazing emotions playing that game because People have been playing chess for like how many years, you know, and they still play the game and they still enjoy it. So it is uh, it is very fun to play video games in general. And what is your goal for yourself on the, the streaming life and world? My goal? Mm -hmm. Well, they are very ambitious, obviously, uh, but... Uh, I, to be honest, don't plan very much ahead. I am a person, which is probably incorrect because you should definitely plan your life ahead for five years, 10 years. I don't do that. I live this certain moment, you know, and I just do things and I enjoy them today because uh, I feel like if you're going to be po focusing too much about what's happening, what's going to happen in year two, three, five, you're going to just forget about today, which is very important because the only day which we have is today, right? So I just focus kind of on today and what I can bring on the table today. And regarding like streaming world, like uh, I was Googling and I was seeing that Ninja, the streamer Ninja was making, it, it showed on the article like 500 a month. Like what is the biggest numbers you have seen other streamers make per month income wise? Um, I don't normally, I don't, I, I haven't checked this sort of information, but uh, mm -hmm. recently there has been a, the biggest deal which has happened in the streaming industry. Uh, one streamer, XQC, he got bought non-exclusively uh, to stream on other alternative um, streaming platform, which is Kick, T of Kick. Uh, and he, like for the official sources, he got paid $100 million to do that. But again, it's non-exclusive. Non I can explain what non-exclusive means. Uh, it means that he, you have like let's say an obligation we don't know what is his obligations uh, and what sort of uh, hours he has to cover but i would assume that he has to cover like let's say 120 hours per month on kick and then we have when he has done that if he has done those hours on he on the kick platform he can also stream on any other platform which for instance is twitch right where his main audience is coming from so it's like a very win-win situation because uh, you got 100 million into your pocket and you can still stream a little bit on twitch whilst not losing uh, your main audience so it's pretty incredible if uh, my mom and some old people hear that somebody got paid 100 million to play a video game for 120 hours per month on like one well, platform, they would be insanely confused. Yeah, I wouldn't understand that. it. Yes, Many people sure. will be probably envy, envious, yes. jealous, but some people, it could inspire them, right? For sure. And I think the gaming industry is also growing. It's not going it to shrink. It's going to grow explosively. Though. I'm pretty sure it's just the beginning of it because the uh, gaming industry is the biggest entertainment industry in the world. If you're going to combine all the, I don't know, NHL and NBA and so on, you combine them all together. They don't generate as much uh, like money as much as gaming industry does, Inter like in entertainment wise. Wow. Like, you know, yeah, it's pretty, it's very big because there is everyone everyone almost plays video games you know even on your phone sometimes you might be i don't know seeing people just sitting and playing some kind of bot, like you know games but it's still considered as a gaming and did you see the new things that come out of unreal engine 5 the mm -hmm. game dynamics the lighting and how they make the games That's i saw insane. some videos where they're just like bum 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 five buttons 10 minutes there's like a world created yeah exactly like a unique one and yeah. also potentially that uh, artificial intelligence is also going to be integrated mm -hmm. into the gaming in the future that's going to be massive how how that's gonna work how, that uh, work? i don't really know we're gonna see that in future since that's just the beginning of artificial intelligence but i would assume that um for instance uh you know how let's say video game has um um like NPCs, right? Mm -hmm. And they behave in a certain pattern because the the game developers has developed like made, made them that you have to move left and right, left and right. But if the artificial intelligence is going to be, for instance, that's my idea. I might be wrong. Uh, then those NPCs might just behave as they want to. They will gonna I don't know be friends with you or be against you. So it's it's gonna be incredible to see. To be honest, yeah, it's, it's insane. They can make their own decisions. Yes. You can have conversations with them. Exactly. Because nowadays they're all like pre-scripted, right? Yes, exactly. Like Red Redemption Two, it's all pre-scripted. All the answers, all the things. 
I saw the new things for Cyberpunk, the, the game Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. They also added w w how the NPC is gonna react. An NPC for people who don't, that's the non player. How do you, how, what do you say? It? What it is? Um, it's like a non real player, it's something like, a, like that. It's like a bot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. something like that. And it's crazy what they're gonna do to that, that thing. And also, like, I noticed that there's like a guy in Latvia who's like the top G on um, Counter Strike, Brokey. Yes. yes. Know the guy? Yes. And he also makes a ton of money from esports specifically. Yeah, for right? sure. And sponsors, right? I, I don't really know how he makes, but I'm pretty sure. Like, if you're if you're an esports player for the CSGO, oof, that's that's massive. That's the biggest. There's more money in CSGO than other games. Um, I think that the biggest one would be LOL. Mm. Specifically, if we yeah, if we talk about uh, tournament wise, I think that LOL has one of the biggest price pools, or Dota even. They all have like crazy amount of the money. But this like, is my question, like. There's like, I also see this, you know, like every week there's a tournament for Counter-Strike or other games and they have these prize pools. Uh, where does that money come from? There's like a, a, a Arabic bridge guy who just gives out money. How, how, where does the money come from? From NHL, I know where the money comes from. It comes from ticket sales, all of that sh stuff. But where does the money come from these tournaments? Um, well, again, there's also like sponsors, for instance, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, some kind of uh, um, peripheral brand wants to, to be their uh, sponsors and the monitor brands. It's like it's, it's generated from a lot of uh, places, obviously, for them. Again, I'm not really into the esports. I mean, I am part of the gaming industry, but I'm not really into esports. But I think it's definitely sponsors. It's also um, the company which holds the, the game. They also might give some sort of funds for that because uh, they generate insane amount of the income from, let's say, for instance, Specifically, uh, CSGO, it's skins. They have mm -hmm. insane amount, like, on the... Like, you can afterwards check the statistically wise. They have, like, billions of dollars in the skins every single day, probably, just uh, uh, in terms of trading and so on. So, yeah, it's... Uh, there is, like, a lot of sources of income, for sure. So, based main idea, big companies who want to sell you products or sell you virtual products, they sponsor the event, so they get noticed and seen yeah like labels on there yeah, that's yeah. how it happens right for sure that's like probably one of the sources crazy that's crazy okay can you like i what was interesting for me also when i was thinking about you is i was thinking you're not just streaming or making content you're actually making your content viral thinking about how to attract more people to see you and to keep watching you and i was thinking how could i use your knowledge and my question was how do you make your content more viral more to have more reach to have more like i don't know impact how do you do it like what's your process of thinking uh, you know thumbnails the videos or the content like what is the process because there is a process there is a solve. are you specifically asking about the youtube in my case that would be more relevant okay uh so i don't do my youtube videos i have editor for that mm -hmm. and he is responsible for everything he's responsible for thumbnails as you mentioned because thumbnails are very important uh and then like i just send him like video like i i don't know i get, got a crazy incredible game on live on stream uh i crop it and i send him a link being like this is the game which should go like on youtube and then he does his uh work on his end so he's normally responsible for my for my youtube videos and so on but uh, since i have been doing the videos related to PUBG already um, since 2000, I guess, 19. So I had this channel since like four years. Um, they, the, in general, like YouTube algorithms knows that like my channel is uh, unknown for the PUBG, right? So every single time there is going to be a video which is going to get like a little bit more clicks, I guess it's going to be pushed um, among the people who enjoy to watch specifically like VR games or gaming in, in, um, in general. So that's just like YouTube algorithms. It's uh, those are very hard to predict and know how they work. Hmm. That's but a mystery, I guess, for them, for them as well. You know? And what do you look in the videos? There's like a, something a sauce. There's something funny happens. Something crazy um, happens. Well, it also very much yeah depends on the game. For instance, mm -hmm. when uh, PUBG releases, uh, I don't know, new a new gun into the game, which is like wow, because they don't do it very often. And whenever a new gun comes out, and let's say you win a game only with that gun, and you had like. 20 plus kills which is 20 kills in game is very hard to achieve and you have like 20 kills with this new gun alone and obviously everyone will gonna want to go and watch how did how did you do the 20 kills with that new gun how did it work how 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 many uh, bullets does it take to kill person was the recoil for the gun so people just like to watch like the new the new con if 
PUBG gen generates new content, it's also good for the content creators. If nothing new happens in the game, then it's a little bit harder because you always kind of do the things around, which has already, uh, you have already published, I don't know, five games, which were kind of with the same guns, then you have to have something either funny happening, again, either kill record, um, like, I don't know, 30 kills, that's like, that's massive. Um, so yeah, it very much depends uh, what kind of like maybe funny conversation with the random person you played and then you just like talk with him. He's from, I don't know, uh, from Portugal and then you just talk about something uh, and then people just like to listen to this conversation between two strangers, for instance. So it's mm. like it's very much like depends on so the match. So I took from you that actually I I am in this marketing and sales world, helping consultants, coaches, service providers. And I, I took it like okay, I should try for marketing, maybe new methods of doing marketing, maybe different angles, because it's the same way how you said, like new stuff. Yeah. And also I took from you to experiment maybe with a lot of different nuances, mm -hmm. maybe like ad wise, the ad could be like a conversation, the ad could be maybe not even me, but some other people. And that's what I took from that. It's very important just to always do new things which you think might not work, but you have to experiment because if you're not going to try them, you will never know if it would work out or not. And this is a crazy comparison. You said you make 20 to 100K a month. I make like right now the business generates, not make, but business generates 100 to maybe 120 now, in like last three months. K per month. Mm -hmm. But I have way more people than you. I have like 19 now. Okay. And you have... One, two. Oh my God. No, it's like <laughs> one, two, three. Yeah, it depends. How um, much is your cost per month um, for the business thing? Yeah, again, it depends on the project. If there is something to film, um, um, I don't know if we have if we have like a big uh, video to do. For instance, one of the biggest video which I did recently was um, the car video, which was like twenty minute long. That one was a little bit pricey for me. Again, it was like I guess how much did we spend on that video in general? gonna be hard to know like maybe 3k we on one video yeah oh, that's interesting because uh we needed to rent um the bikernia kutrasse because mm. we rented mm -hmm. it you know because it's not as easy to get it like go, go just go how there much and did drive. It cost? i think we did i don't really remember how much was it maybe it was like 700 euros or something to rent it for, for one hour no it was uh oh, i already don't remember three hours well that's nice yeah, but I mean, other countries has that for free. Like for instance, Germany, there's like plenty of those uh, three like places where you can go and drag, and uh, it's completely for free. Uh, but like you know, Bikinikutras is the only place where you can do it for free. Like you know, in Latvia, so we needed to do, um, yeah, film it there. So then equipment, renting some things, you know, extra because uh, I mean, I have all the equipment in terms of cameras, lights, and so on because I have also invested in that a lot because I have uh, pretty a lot of uh, things uh, for filming. But sometimes there's something what's missing, so that's why we have to rent it, you know. Then also, so yeah. Pretty but much how much that. money do you spend per month on your team, on, on other stuff that needs to be paid for you to stream, make, no, like what, how much is the expenses? Again, it's very much depends if there is something to film. If there is mm -hmm. nothing to film, then nothing. Oh, really? Uh, for sure, because like I don't need any videos, you know? Crazy. Yeah. I spend like 10 to 30k a month on ads. The ones which are like pushed in the internet, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you seen my ads? No, sorry. <laughs> okay, it's okay. You're not the audience, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm um, targeting people who like have, uh, but you have like Facebook pages. So it, oh yeah, I also have Facebook. Yeah, yeah completely yeah. forgot to mention that. Yeah. It's also actually really. Um, Facebook is also very good in terms of gaming for the discover for for people to discover you through for the notice Facebook. you to get attention. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Because um, um, there is a lot of audience as well who plays video games in Facebook, and Facebook also had Facebook gaming, but I think they did shut it down. Sadly. Mm. So how much you spend per month? Is it like, like biggest month have you spent how much? I don't really know. Like 10K? Honestly. More? Like on, like on the videos and so on? No, like on your, I would say this is like a business for you, right? Oh, business. Oh. But it's so interesting because you're like three people team, two people team. It like depends. I mean, specifically camera people. Like, no, you know, I mean we, your team, whole team. Oh, okay, okay. So it's a uh, different it's structure, of ah, course. Okay, yeah. So I was, I was specifically talking about the people who like work with the cameras. You know, the content we're creating. Mm, but but so you have one, two camera guys. You have agencies, a couple of them. Mm -hmm. You have other people who you and also, outsource. And also, also personal manager. Oh, but personal. he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's a guy. Yeah, he's a uh, so assistant, right? I yeah, he's like my personal personal assistant, and I actually he found me through the Twitch. 
uh, when I just started my streams, we just started to be with him in the contact. We were chatting, um, like discussing a lot of new things, like things and ideas together. And he was just like, do you want me to be your manager? I was like, wait, how is that? Because I had no idea what is that. He's like, if you're going to be receiving emails, you just like forward them to me and I'm going to be handling them. I was like, sure. So since then, it's been like almost five, four and a half year, five years. Uh, we've been not only like working together, but also very good friends because he's uh, he has helped me as well a lot because his uh, communication skills is just like top notch you know whilst i'm like i'll be answering to emails hello yes let's make this deal done goodbye whilst he's like so professional typing those emails very professionally and very smart and like whoa so he has helped me as well a lot so he's like as my personal manager then my agency and plus uh, my camera people that's like not so much people right and it's interesting uh i mean theoretically yeah it's not theoretically mm -hmm. it's not like I, I want these more like nuanced questions. Uh, like let me ask you this: mm -hmm. last six months, has there been a month where you generate less than fifty k a month? Yeah, for sure. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ah, okay. Okay. But it's interesting for you. It, most of it is profit. For me, like I make, um, how do you say it? Like bruto. Uh, I understood. Like you have a lot of expenses as well to spend. It's not like you just make it all for yourself. No, yeah, I don't like it's. No, our profit wise, we have a good profit. We have like from 30 to 60% profit, but per month, but I buy courses. I pay like, I, we bought last year a mastermind for 40,000. And then we, this year we bought something for 18,000. And again for 12,000. And again for 5,000. That's just education for me and my team. Yeah, but that's investment. Yeah, it's like that. Yeah. I don't take out the money because I have this uh, belief. I, I have I, I found this guy, Alex Formosi. Maybe you know him. He's a good good guy about business education. And uh, I took from him this very to heart. He said, like, my goal is to become really, really, really wealthy. That is my goal. Right? Your goal. Yeah, that's for sure. I want to be like a jillionaire and then I want to make my team crazy big. I want to make my team rich. I want to make them wealthy. I want to make their families good. So... And he was saying that uh, as you don't make so much money as your goal, which could be in my case, I want to be at 10 million a, a year as soon as possible, which is like a million a year, a million a month. He said all the excessive money you have left, you should reinvest in education to get skills and knowledge so you can grow the team or invest in talent. Yeah. Such as like people to make maybe content because that's also something I'm planning to do. My expenses for content is like maybe two to three K per month now, but I'm planning to expand it way more mm -hmm. because I want the organic to work much better. Like for you, everything's organic, right? There's no like paid ads. You don't run paid ads. Mm -mm, no, it's crazy, right? But I run paid ads. <laughs> and if I would stop running paid ads, we would definitely not make not not make even probably like 60 K a month. Probably. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we could. I don't know. But maybe it's interesting. Just a comparison. Yeah, like, I mean, it's a little bit different it also is fields, you know, it and uh, you have a little bit different focus, even though you also work in internet, but, uh, you know, you have people to support yeah. and also to gain the knowledge and education and so on. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think maybe that is interesting for us, like we could be making right now 500 a month. We just have some problems such as the lead amount, which is like people signing up on our website or us doing sales calls enough because we do 300 to 400 sales calls per month. Mm -hmm. Those are like Zoom meetings with people who are yeah. interested in buying something from us. Yeah. And uh, they're normally outside Latvia, right? They're not. It's like 50 50. Right now, this month, it's 50 50. Okay. So half the clients we get are from Latvia. Yeah. Because Latvian is a good market for us either way. And half now is actually from Europe. We're mostly focusing on uh, Germany, Netherlands, yeah. Sweden, and they're buying our stuff. Yeah, but wait, again, Latvia, what do they buy from you? The same thing that the English people do. So I sell like, um, I sell a service where you get an account manager who's yeah. going to make your offer, help you to launch your first ads okay. on uh, Meta or YouTube. Yeah. And then we give a training platform, which is educational, that he helps you and teaches you how to sell, how to make offers, how to run ads, how to structure your business. I, I later I'm gonna show you a lot of stuff. Okay. So there's a lot of stuff. Mumbo jumbo. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> gonna be cool. Could you please walk me through a typical day of yours? Oh, okay. Very simple. Uh, I do try to um, exercise almost every single day. I Morning. Mean, yeah, in the mornings, because um, like it's very important. You no, know, since I sit for quite a while, seven approximately seven hours a day, I sit. It's very important to uh, also have like physical activities. So very. 
very simple just wake up in the morning prepare the food for the day because when i'm live i just can't do that you know i can't be like okay guys i'm getting 20 minutes afk i need to prepare myself like lunch or something so i always prepare everything in advance Mm -hmm. um exercises uh then some emails here and there checking something out and then yeah go live i normally start to my streams around 1 p.m uh, and then I finish out 8, 8 p.m. And then there's a couple of hours to do something else. And then like days are going by this fast. You just, you're just, you just woke up and you're already going to bed. And it's happening every single day like this. Because, uh, yeah, that time is flying super quickly. So it's very, very regular and I think super extraordinary. Have you been to the hype world in Blaumaniela? Hype it's... world. Is that like a new yeah. uh, PC? No, unfortunately, I haven't. It's, nice. it's interesting for me and you. Uh, like my work day is way different than yours. And when I have fun, I play games. But that's yeah. when I have fun. But yeah. that's when you work. Yes, what do you exactly. do for fun? Yeah, that's very funny because uh, also, you know, because uh, gaming in, in the in, at the first place was as a hobby for me as well. I was just like playing for fun and I was liking mm. it. Like just it would be my free time where I would like just, you know, play some CSGO or something. Uh, but now since it has turned into my work, it's not my hobby really anymore, but I still love to do it. So if I have a free time, that would be probably the least thing I would do. Um, <laughs> so if yeah, my, my hobbies and like if I have free spare time is uh, reading. Mm. I was very bad at school. I would I would be like very bad student and I would I would dodge everything what would be related to reading and only in my adult age I understood how it's important to read because uh, there's so much amazing information in the books. So I tried to read as much as I can when I can. Um, baking also. I love baking cakes. That's my <laughs> that's my hobby as well. So yeah. You, what kind of cakes do you bake? Uh, I like to bake like healthy vegan alternatives, you know, oh. like because I'm very sweet tooth and like if I would eat all those cakes which are available, oof, I would be probably not, <laughs> wouldn't fit in this chair. Uh, so I try to bake like a vegan alternative, healthy desserts like that. If you would choose any cake, what cake would you choose? And it can be sweet. What's your favorite cake? Cheesecake. Ah, cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> we know I have a favorite tiramisu and sometimes oh, the, the guest so says good. tiramisu like this is our guy he knows it's like every time we ask this thing <laughs> okay cool um like that's cool for this what's something that people ask you all the time on twitch <laughs> <laughs> what people ask me on twitch normally there's a lot of different kind of questions people ask on twitch um it's like it very much depends um very basic ones probably like probably it's funny enough or not um they always ask you super private questions and so on but uh it's like mo- mostly we talk about gaming related things you know because mm. people are fans of like let's say PUBG and then they like, what do you think about this new gun what do you think about this new update and so on so they always um yeah that's main discussions which we normally have how about everything actually we talk mm. about absolutely everything what's the biggest donation you have had on twitch like one time like one at, time. at one yeah um it was um i think Okay, it was not one time, it was two days, but same person. And then two days together, it was 10,000. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, but that was actually a very funny story, which I'm not going to tell. At the end, everything did work out, but yeah, it was uh, 10,000. Wow, in two days. that's cool. That's cool. And I think an interesting story was also, I, I found your video. I was like, oh, I need to get this girl on this show. And I was like, I, I went to your uh, Instagram. I was like, man, there's like seven or 600,000 people. I was like, need to get her attention. So I went to Twitch. And I did the, uh, I haven't done it first time, like for me, <laughs> first time to doing anything like that, like to yeah, write yeah, the yeah. message. And then I was like, how much should I donate? It, need, it, it can be so little. And I was like, okay, let's do hundred euro donation. And then I'm write you to check out Instagram that I want to invite to the show. That was a nice way, right? That was a nice way to approach yeah, for sure. Because, uh, you know, um, I was also like thinking, how do you, how do you get like attention of like, uh, people who have like a big followers because there's a lot of requests in there. Exactly. Yeah, how much requests do you get on per day on like, uh, yeah, it's a lot, especially if you have like stories posted or posts, you know, then kind of gets attention of your audience. And then you get like a lot of DMS, people either commenting on your story, either asking some questions. So it's. It can be a lot. And you don't look at that, right? You have the manager, right? Or no, I look at that. Oh, you look at it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. But sometimes you might miss this. I don't know as well. My Instagram sometimes is weird. Um, some messages are being like, they, they're they not there, for instance. Like, I know people wrote me mm-hmm. and I go and check and it's not there. I don't know how it works. Mm. Yeah, it's- I want to talk about the craziest things, okay? Last year, 2022, what was the best game in your opinion? Best game I've been in 2022? Oof, that's going to be a hard question because uh, potentially it was out of my uh, yes, it focus, is. you know? Probably. Because uh, I have my favorite already picked. You tell me yours, I'm going to tell you mine. 
because <laughs> I play one game pretty much all the time. And uh, in 2020, I know that this year, I think it's like World of Warcraft. That's 100% because they have released this new hardcore mode and it's gaining like a lot of attention right now. It's like mm. um, a mode. I don't know. Have you ever played World of Warcraft? It is pretty mm. hard game. And uh, the hardcore mode is where you survive without not dying which is almost impossible but people do that and if you like uh, level up your character to like max uh, without not dying so from zero to 100 that's uh, that's like a world records people are making world records in that last year my favorite game was elden ring it's amazing elden ring, yeah it was I the first game it. i played which is a souls game yeah and i was like first time i was googling things to know <laughs> how to do it. next yeah, yeah. step in the game it's like it's so hard it's like the first day you go you start playing there's no difficulty and there's no guidance there's no map there's nothing you yeah. just need to listen to some old people talking some weird language to understand what to do the craziest game ever you haven't played it no i haven't i heard oh about it God, but i haven't <laughs> it last year went win the game award it was the oh, game really? of the year last year that's great what is the games you're looking forward to this year um this year well actually cs point 2.0 point that's they gonna come out october september i mean they were supposed to launch it in the summertime but the summer is already over mm. uh, so i don't really know potentially it's being a little bit postponed and there was another game which is called um, oh it always gets out of my head but there's like a new game which i did see which also is supposed to be launched in november i think it's gonna be in the mix between br and like something as escape from tarkov mm. with an extraction um, I really forgot the name of that game. Do you follow other uh, other platforms like PlayStation? Because I, I'm like a PlayStation gamer. Okay. No, I don't. You don't, right? No, I don't. Yeah, I'm looking forward to like the next Spider-Man. There's going to be the Spider-Man 2 coming out. Okay. That's an amazing game probably. Yeah, I have, uh, I mean, I don't own any PlayStation or console, mm -hmm. sadly. So, you know, when you're not really in that uh, kind of... Have you played any games from, soft from software? Um, no. Yeah, only know. as a kid i did play on nintendo switch mm. but that was like 20 years ago right mm. they had the new game armored core 6 release just now okay the new like uh shooter type of mech game okay but it's mech it's an interesting game you played it i'm thinking about it <laughs> it came out 25th of uh, august so it's like oh so five it's days recent ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay it's like blowing up the internet right now okay it's really yeah it's not game. really what happens like this if there is some kind of game which is kind of new and everyone is playing it then it's definitely gaining a lot of attention especially now there hasn't been any game out there which has uh, um attracted as crazy attention as it was back in 2017 18 19 uh with like for instance pubg uh, fortnite apex legends because pubg is uh the game which got the first game which got into the guinness record book mm. because of the yeah they had like uh, above 3 million current like players at the time which is the biggest amount ever like at the same time 3 million pay playing people um the same exact game yeah and uh, that way they got into the guinness world uh, book and i thought it was an interesting story could you explain that you got almost like how many people live watching you at the same time there was like a crazy amount right yeah um as i mentioned yeah before our uh, conversation that there is uh, natural viewers and also there is a way of like boosting your viewers through the twitch for instance so you can get on the twitch front page is when whenever you enter the twitch page and there is like a, a lot of uh, like i think there's 10 streamers on the front page and then they can scroll and um like kind of um, discover you so when you're on the front page obviously those are not natural viewers because some people just have their front page on and that's going to mm. be already as a viewer for you uh so it was like 12 to 16k people watching when i was on the front page but my natural views where i was just playing game and it was actually because it was insane circle in a game and we had so much action and <laughs> non-stop surviving and when those things happen uh, the retention happens you know people stay because they want to watch the game till the end because there is a certain like um process when you see when the game is coming to an end there is always be boost in the viewers because they want to see the end game because that's a peak mm. uh so it was 4,600 people like which was my natural views 400 and yeah in the same second that's a lot of people that's like half latvia basically <laughs> <laughs> like watching you live right it is pretty incredible yeah because when sometimes i am attending i don't know concert or something and i see there is a, like a thousand of people in a concert i'm like sometimes looking at it and being like wow this is sometimes this many people watch me at the same second when i play video games from home it is sometimes my Crazy, brain doesn't right? understand that as well yeah are you like a gaming geek regarding technology like you're like, like you um, really know the mouses and the keyboards and the computer specs 
Yeah, yeah. You know. Specifically peripherals, yeah, because I've been working with Logitech uh, since four years already. So every single time the new product comes out, I'm like, what's new in it? Like, what's like, you know, what's so specific about it and so on. So yeah, you just learn it with the process, you know? I have a geeky question. Okay. I just bought the video card, which is RTX 4070 Ti. Is it a good one? Yeah, it's very good. Okay. Why didn't you go for 4090 though? See? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, that's, that's the but one. But it's that, also good. Because it's I called, good. I was like... I want a cool computer. <laughs> I called to Datatex. There's a company in Latvia. Yeah. I was like, I want a cool computer. Which one should I pick? Okay. And then there was like this one. And I called my brother who's like 50, 16 or 15 years old. He plays Counter-Strike. He edits videos. He has like all sorts of... He's two or three. upcoming, upcoming game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's game. He's but he's like on more focusing on vi editing. Okay. He's also editing Fortnite videos. Like okay. with music and stuff. I'm going to show you later on. That's very impressive. Uh, and, um, and he was like, man, this one is nice. This one's nice. No, it's very good. Yeah. It's just like... 4070 Ti is very good. It's very good. Okay, yeah. cool. Um, what do you... Okay, now, Mr. Pap, please listen to CISO's questions. Okay. What would you choose? Uh, hot or cold? Cold. Cold. Why cold? Uh, because uh, I think that in a cold environment, your brain works a little bit better. Because when it's hot, you get a little lazy. You want to, you know, not to do anything. I just see it for myself during the summer season. I want to work less. I want to just enjoy time next to the water. I want to do some water activities. I want to enjoy time in the nature a little bit more. But when it's cold, you don't have much to do. Just work, you know. So in a work, uh, uh, when in a cold environment, it's just like easier to focus on the work. And your brain just functions a little bit more clear, clearer. Yeah. Cool. What's your favorite restaurant in Riga? Um, so since I'm vegan, there's not many options and, uh, it's probably cause eats cause uh, that's one of the most, cause we only have like five plant-based restaurants in Latvia. So, um, yeah, that's one of, one of, I like all five, you know, but, uh, the cause eats is, uh, I like it a lot because they have a lot of different delicious cakes. As I mentioned <laughs> before, I'm a very big uh, cake fan. <laughs> uh, a uh, favorite sport? Uh, esports. Esports. Which For game sure. would you watch if you CSGO. don't? CSGO. CSGO. Yeah. Me too. I also watch those tournaments. Yeah. Even though I, I, I started my streams from CSGO, but uh, even I don't play it now, but it's just like, it's already like a football. You know, you watch it because you understand it's 5v5. They have to plant the bomb. They have to defuse the bomb. And when uh, those players who have like 10,000 plus hours in the game, the way they... Um, the way they have their performance in game, communication, the rotations, is just like, it is incredible to watch best book you read and you would recommend to other people uh 21 lesson of the 21st century was the author uh Huval harari yuval harari sorry cool why that book um because it shows a very clear and cold mind towards the 21 topic of uh, the, the the things which are related to us such as technology religion i don't know beliefs and so on so it's uh, it's it's like a very interesting way of uh, discovering new ways of seeing the world i mm. think and also the future of the world okay how everything is going to be um Mm, like you no know, robotized and everything is going to be like ai let like we were going to just be living this uh, uh virtual reality or whatever and uh, he actually mentioned one of the things uh, uh in the book which still is in my mind that in the future in the future i know 10 20 30 years uh we're going to have only two things which is going to remain for humans it's going to be which will going to bring them pleasure it's video games and drugs Wow. He mentioned that, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So I was like, hmm, okay, I kind of agree with that because... Uh, and you're one of them, right? Yeah, I'm That's in this good. industry, so... I need to go into the drug industry. <laughs> I saw the Netflix TV show about painkillers. A crazy It's TV good. Show. It's I, good. I seen it's like crazy. it's a thumbnail and someone suggested me as well in the chat to watch it's it. It's like crazy like, what they, how they structured the drug and what they did with the drug and how much money they make with the drug. Yeah. And it's like how they did... It's crazy. It's crazy. eye-opening. It's very yeah, nice yeah, that yeah. Netflix has a lot of amazing shows which like educate you. Yeah. In a way, so for sure. Last thing, what, which or what is a person you look up to and feel inspired or you look for inspiration? That's a good question. Um, I don't probably have such type of person, but I can say streaming related, there was one person who actually inspired me to stream. Uh, that was Dr. Disrespect. I don't know, have you heard about him or mm. not? He's a, he's a legend. He's I think he's an example of how streamer and content creator has to... Um, uh, what he has to do during his live streams because he brings show. It's not like he just sits down on the PC and he plays games. He has like he has his uh, uh, team of one person as well who sits 
whilst he streams, he sits in another room and uh, Doc has like a green screen and they create different kind of green screens of like him being in the gym or him driving his Lumbo or something. <laughs> and then he just like, sometimes he has some kind of moments where he like just stands from his uh, setup and he goes and sits into his Lumbo office, which is just a green screen. And he pretends of driving it and he has a speech. That's just like, it is incredible. And he was one of the reasons why I decided to try the stream because he was also playing PUBG back then. And uh, he just... He's just the person who sits in front of the PC, he plays video games and he screams, shouts, he's like, he has this incredible energy. And I was like looking at him being like, wow, I want to do like, I want to do the same, you know, because he was, he was uh, one of my inspirations to start the stream. Uh, yeah, but as for today, um, I don't know, I have like many probably, I don't have like one certain person, I just like to, it depends on the mood as well. But yeah, I don't think I have answered the question because I don't have a certain person which I'm going to go to listen to so I can get inspired by him, sadly. Favorite movie? Uh, probably it's going to be very um, um, predictable as Forrest Gump. Ah, yeah? Yeah. That's nice. Though. I mean, Forrest Gump, Interstellar, I really like as well. La La Land. Uh, um, you know those movies which are literally in top 20 Did best like movies movie of all Barbie? time? I actually haven't watched it. I walked out on it in the middle of it. You know, really? Like, yeah. And so I didn't like of, Oppenheimer as well. You didn't like it because like, it was very funny. Like I actually, last time I was in cinema was in 2019 before the COVID. Oh, really? So I was like, I need to go to the cinema. So I went to the cinema and uh, there was like Barbie and Oppenheimer. So I went to the Oppenheimer because I'm a more person who I'm like more like down to earth. I don't like fantasy things. Mm. I just, yeah. So I went to the Oppenheimer and I made the story like, guys, would you movie I'm watching Barbie or Oppenheimer? And there was like, uh, I think 50, 50 people voted. Uh, but yeah, I liked it because I think it educates us from the things which are we, which we are surrounded right now and which uh, brings a certain threat to the humanity. But it was a little too long. Yeah, I mean, it's the same long. way. I yeah. didn't walk out of it, but it was too long, right? Yeah, a little bit too long. Yeah. But over, overall, I think it's a great movie of specifically of an educational part because yeah. I like movie. I like to watch movies which gives you a certain background and knowledge of how certain things are right now in our world. Yeah. So it's uh, yeah. Thank you, Dana, for coming. Thank You're you. a sharp lady. Let's <laughs> go. Stay sharp. <laughs>